if you're going to have yeah. a beard and a receding yeah. hairline and not show any semblance of transition, That's you right. are just looking like a man. You can't expect to walk into a female space and be warmly greeted because the thing is, and I say this a lot, and I think it sometimes bugs people when I say it, but as trans women, we don't have, those spaces weren't made for us. We are guests in those spaces. Women allow us into those spaces. <laughs> Hey everyone, I caught myself unbelievable person today. I, I'm actually, I'm fangirling. <laughs> Stop I it. totally Stop am. It. I'm blushing you, right now. You can see that I am melting right now. We're <laughs> like, oh my gosh, is this real? <laughs> so with that, I really want to thank everybody for watching the channel and subscribing and liking and pushing these. Yeah, I cannot get these amazing guests without all of you, you know, helping this channel really grow and it's growing tremendously. And I feel so proud of it. And all of us in this community really building a platform to bring people with, you know, these Im important stories, as well as people in the trans community who mean a lot to me and have different opinions. And you can see that there is just a difference going on here. So with that, I have the beautiful, amazing Alexis Blake. And Hi. oh my God. <laughs> Do you know what? This is so surreal. Like when you emailed me, I'm like, I literally said to my fiance Liam, I was like, Liam, Liam, look who emailed me. Awesome. He's like, no way. I'm so, so I'm, thank you so much for having me on your channel and you're doing some amazing work and I love watching your content. And I think it's so important to have the juxtaposition of some of the crazy stuff going on with the trans community and just to have some like grounded people like yourself and Blair and just to... Yeah. spread a different message and just to show that we're not all the same so thank you we're not so thank you and you know Blair is one of my great friends I love Blair so much she's awesome and beautiful and she does a lot of you know it's because of her that I'm actually doing this it really is I I, I would have walked away a million years ago I'm 62 I'm like I can't get involved in really this I'm 62 <laughs> I don't know I don't have no idea <laughs> so you know but that being said uh, you being a newer YouTuber and you adding your voice, I'm pretty sure Blair appreciates you as well. She's that oh. generous of a person. And so, so with that, I just, I just want to bring you on because I want to hear a little bit more about your story and how you sort of became who you are and how you transition, but we don't, and also then I want to move into more of your, your, your channel and why you started the channel. So if we could maybe start a little bit with your background, I think people would be very interested in that. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, hi everyone. If you don't know me, my name's Alexis Blake. Um, I am thirty years old. Oh gosh, I don't feel like I'm in a job interview. Um, <laughs> so I started my transition three years ago. I'm almost done now, and now wow. time's flown. Um, wow. I came out as trans when I was fifteen. Uh, it was wasn't the right time for me, and I just couldn't accept it about myself. So I pushed it right down. <laughs> carried on living yeah. my life had a dance career, met my fiance, and then it all bubbled out to the top and I couldn't hide anymore. So I began my transition. Uh, the care in the UK is not great for trans people. Mm -hmm. So I did it privately. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's just been a bit of a whirlwind really. Wow. You don't realize what goes into transition until you start going with it. There's so much like surgeries, the laser, the, there's yep. so much, the voice, the name, the documents, like it's, it's wild, but I've been very, very lucky to have my fiance Liam support me uh, and my family. So I am, I know I'm so lucky compared to so you many are. trans women um, yeah. and trans men. So yeah, yeah I'm, you are it's just, yeah. I can't believe crazy. it's only been three years that you transitioned. You look amazing. Thank wow. You. <laughs> see, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not saying that like just because honestly, what I, what I see is I can see people who put the work in. And I can see people who are making an effort to pass, which, you know, again, I can tell everybody I transitioned 32 years ago. I have a lot wow. of experience around this. I made an effort to look like a man. Now today there's this weird pushback on passing. And I, I, mm -hmm. I really cannot connect with that because look at you. Nobody would ever know that thank you, you. F, no, thank I, you I, it's a but you I, put I, the work in me it, it blows my mind like do you, you remember the planet fitness whole crazy thing um and when i was saw that and it was just a man short hair shaving his beard in the mirror in a female locker room it like the thing that shocked me the most i, I was just like if you are a genuine trans woman you would be mortified at the thought of anyone noticing you as being trans but to shave a beard which is such a masculine thing to do like i used to go into the bathrooms at work the little single cubicles and shave like twice a day because i didn't want anyone to see any stubble or shadow mm -hmm. so that's where i really can't 
like I can't connect with them on a human level because I'm like that's not what trans is to me trans transition to me is to try and blend in and <laughs> as the opposite genders to what you were born as and I just I just blows my mind when I see things like that I'm like why yeah why is a great question and thank you for saying that because I can say that but it, I'm not a trans woman you know so I have a <clears throat> I have a different space in this and men men don't feel threatened by me I've lived this way for a long time I've navigated the male world men don't tend to care if you're a woman becoming a man they kind of think it's cool on on some level it's not but it's opposite in your space and you, mm-hmm. you I'm sure you know that women do have issues with a trans woman looking like me they literally look like yeah I, I completely understand that though because if if okay i'm trying to say it as, as nice as possible don't but worry if you're not going to put any effort in to transition if you're going to have yeah. a beard and a receding yeah. hairline and not show any semblance of transition you are just looking like a man you can't expect to walk into a female space and be warmly greeted because the thing is and I say this a lot and I think it sometimes bugs people when I say it but as trans women we don't have those spaces weren't made for us we are guests in those spaces women allow us into those spaces and it's not me like pandering to anyone or anything Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. but I those spaces were built to keep women and girls safe. So us going into them, it's kind of us being like, hi, can I use this space, please? That's why when I first started my transition, I obviously came out and like Liam started calling me Alexis, but that was it for a while. I didn't start using the female bathroom straight away. Absolutely not, because I know how uncomfortable it would have made people in there, women in there, to see a man walking in, which in turn would have made me feel uncomfortable. So I waited until I started hormones. I waited until I was wearing makeup and wigs and clothes. And and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I passed. You could still tell I was a trans woman, but I think just women seeing, ah, that's a trans woman. That's That's not a man. And I think that maybe put them at ease a bit more. Well, I mean, I just have to say thank you. And I'm going to say thank you for all the women who watch this channel because I'm telling you right now, they're going to thank you for saying that. That's all they're saying. That's all they're saying. They're saying respect our space, which you do, which Blair White does, with all my trans women friends do. They would never. That's how I could tell you they're not real. I hate using real, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to use the word transsexual. I I hope it doesn't offend you. No, no, no. That's absolutely fine. Excellent. So transsexuals want to look like men and women. We do not want to make a problem. We want. I wait until I was enough that guys wouldn't have too much of it or it made me uncomfortable. It makes me, yeah. doesn't it make you uncomfortable to walk into a space where people are staring at you like you don't belong here? Yeah, literally. And I just, I, again, I can't understand like the confidence you must have. And it's almost kind of selfish to me to walk into that space yes. where there's a four-year-old girl with a mom and to clearly see she's shocked and a bit scared. Yes. You, why would you do that? I just don't understand it. Yeah. And it, it's it's so frustrating because if you think of the population of trans men and women, actual trans men and women across the world, it's only a tiny small percent of trans women that are men with a beard and no makeup and not presenting feminine. And they're going into these female spaces and causing this controversy, which then paints us all in that same light and we're not all in that same light and it's so infuriating i think that's kind of why my channel began and Mm. why every why i started doing this because i was just getting so sick of being made to look a certain way and i'm like that's not how all trans people are it's not and also i think really what's important for your channel is that there's a lot of trans women YouTubers and they yeah. all are completely opposite of the way you think. They also don't necessarily want to pass. They also think that they're entitled to women's spaces. They come they come to this with an entitlement, right? It's, and that's misogyny though, isn't it? Let's be real. Excellent. That's what that is. It's just excellent. it's just male privilege. Yep. Thank you for saying that again. You know, it helps it helps my argument because I argue with them all the time. And I, I'm a biological mm-hmm. female. I lived, I'm thir- I'm 62. I transitioned 32 years ago. I've literally lived half my life as a woman and half my life as a man. It's I get so to wild s- hearing you say that. Sorry to jump in. It's just so <laughs> wild to me. Like, I'm like, Ooh. But I mean, that's a compliment, as you know. But that being said, I have a perspective on things that very few people in this world have. Not to say I'm better than or any of that, but what I'm trying to say is I I lived in the female space, okay? So I I can actually relate to 
women in a way that possibly you can or other trans, but they tend not to have the same compassion you have. Well, are they really trans then? Because I think mm. if you are really trans, you can empathize with the female experience. And don't get me right. wrong, I am a biological man. I will say that until my dying breath. It's it's it bugs when people forget science is real. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> I spent 27 years as a man. I grew up as a boy and those that's my life experience. So that's what I can draw from. Yes. But of course, when you transition, like some of my experiences now cross over with women's. But right. like going back to what we were saying about these entitled trans women just demanding to use female spaces and to be able to play sports, like the whole Leah Thomas thing. Wow. It, it's so frustrating to me because I'm just like, take a step back and look at, the situations going on talking mm. to these individuals yes. and how do they not realize that they're in the wrong it's like so they're so like blindsided to not mm. realize they're doing anything wrong and i just i can't understand it i won't believe that they don't know that there's no way that they're, they're not <clears throat> idiot i don't believe they're idiots i believe that they're misogynist and i believe they're entitled and i believe that they hate i i see i feel like you don't hate women i mm. feel like they actually hate women and they want to be a that's why so so moving into that there's this newer thing that has come up. I mean, it's been around for a long time, but it's sort of was pushed down. And there's this sort of um, idea that there's trans women who are called AGP, right? Oh gosh, what's this? Auto I mean, gyne <laughs> I'm so um, I, I just love you. You're so refreshing. You're like, you're like a young well, a young person who has not been on the internet. That's what I love about you. It's so beautiful. Okay. Like, <laughs> lay it on it, me, lay it on me. I'm ready. <laughs> it's gonna kill you. It's it's a real thing. I really believe it. And I and I think right prior to we got on board here, we were talking behind behind the scenes before we started recording. And I believe that a lot of the newer trans women are not transsexuals. I don't believe mm -hmm. that they have a disorder. I don't know how you feel about that, but I really believe that I have a disorder called gender. Yeah, dysphoria. absolutely. Thank yeah. you. So yeah. with that, I think that there's a, there's a group of people who have infiltrated into the space who are AGP, which is autogynephilia, which is more of a love of self. It's more of a cross-dresser, a transvestite, okay. Okay. somebody who feels that they are sexually attracted to themselves as a woman. That's what an autogynephilia, right. it's actually, so I want to say something. There's nothing wrong with it. No, 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 no. It's no. not the same. Oh, as it's absolutely not the same because there's, when, and I'm not saying every trans woman has to do lots of different surgeries and X, Y, Z, but there yeah. has to be some semblance of a transition. And that's what trans is to me, I think. And I, it does rub people the wrong way when I say this about this trans umbrella. I really, yeah. I don't think Great it point. is an umbrella. I think you have transgender and then you have all these other different things around it, but it's mm -hmm. different and it's okay that it's different. It's fine yeah. to be different. We're all, it makes the world more interesting, but I think a lot of stuff is being put under the same trans umbrella. And I think it dilutes the meaning of what it is to be transgender, which is to have a diagnosis by a medical practitioner that is Great. gender dysphoria. Great. And it, it's, I just like I look at some like say someone who's non-binary who maybe changes their name and their appearance if that makes you happy I love that for you but then when I'm put in the same picture frame and yeah. we're called the same I'm like it's not it's different and that's fine to be different but I think it's right. just being aware of those differences in our lives why do you think and it's gonna just be a you know a question I'm not sure if any of us can even answer but why do you think that they created an umbrella we were doing just fine the I trans thought people so. were, it, what happened what i That's, don't know it, I, I don't know i think i think people always want to feel included and i think because mm, transgender is so popular at the moment maybe for the last five to ten years it's sort yes. of gained more and more popularity and trendiness mm -hmm. maybe it's been wanting to be in that trend and maybe as non-binary i know it's not a new terminology but it's newer to everyone yes. a lot of people didn't know about it i think they're trying to explain what it is so they're lumping it with trans but oh well this is us too and i it does frustrate me a little bit because yeah it's just so different because if someone says they're trans but they don't transition i'm like well you're not i can't that's how my brain works i can't right. compute that it's not to me 
Well, it's not. And I say it all the yeah. time. I mean, I don't care if you're, I'm literally on board with you. We're in complete alignment. Go ahead and be whatever you want. Nobody, actually nobody cares. Remember, I've been around yeah. for a long time. We fought back in the 80s for people to look at, to make sure. I mean, that's when we really got smashed in the face and people didn't. Today, I can tell you, I live perfectly fine as a transsexual man. I don't get, people like me. The people who don't like me are the trans community, which should say everything. So mm -hmm. I don't believe this we don't have rights I mean, but the non-binary thing is not trans it is literally an uh, it's an identity choice yeah I, right? I agree it's it's about your identity and obviously they might have some sort of dysphoria with their Maybe. identity which is Maybe. fine but that's different to having full gender dysphoria which is where you are born as one sex and you feel like the other sex yes. and I always go with like how my I always say how it's how my brain is I feel like I was born a boy with a female brain and i know that, that sometimes upsets women when i say that but it's, it's the only okay. way i can kind of describe it that's right and it's like what was in here was always fighting with what was going on on the outside that's always right. in constant battle yeah and um, that's just the best way i can describe well no it. it's a great way different. it's a great way to describe it whether or not somebody agrees with you or not you're never going to get everyone to agree with no. you that is ridiculous it's no, just I not we're, we're trying to build bridges here people and we don't want you to hate us and we don't we want to join we want to sit at the table with you and we don't Do want know, to talk about it i agree it. <laughs> i agree honestly that i got this comment so early on i started posting to TikTok. that's where i that's where my sort of platform began yeah and i posted a video and it was about the terminologies like chest feeder and womb carrier <laughs> and my female friend was getting so upset by it she's mm. like i feel like my my identity as a woman's been yes. taken away by trying to make everyone equal yes. and i made a video about it and a really? woman commented saying alexis i know you're a trans woman you can have a seat at our table but do not take ours yes. and that to me i was like yes that yeah. is it so i think a lot of women are open to sharing the world with trans women but just don't take their space don't take their identity and have our own and i think that's completely valid and fine because women are still to this day fighting to have their identity equal oh, it's a whole other video to go into but no but it's i think that's the thing it's just a, a man in a wig coming for them and that's what it it's feels disgusting. like to them sometimes no, but I, this is so important. And I really do appreciate you having this conversation because like I said earlier, I can keep saying it until I'm blue in the face, but when an actual real transsexual woman has so much respect, I mean, I can feel your respect for women and it, I, it makes me love you even more because oh, it, no, I'm you. not kidding because this is what we need people to see. Those people who are representing us are not representing us and we don't feel that way and many trans people feel like you and i do but they're not in a position to say what to vocalize you I, it yeah. they're not they're mm -hmm. not i agree and, I, th I think it comes from just like i was raised by my mom and i have a sister they're both strong-minded strong independent right. like kick-ass women and i think because of those women i grew up having so much respect for them seeing the what life threw at them they always yes. got up and carried on and fought yes. and i think that's where it came from for me and that's the kind of a trans woman i never say i'm a woman because I, I i'm not i'm a trans woman it's all it's different and that's fine but that's the kind of person i want to be because i love and respect them so much i guess well no i mean it it, it literally shows through and that's why i'm going to go back to a different type of trans woman that has come come into this picture and if you notice it's mostly trans women who are causing the problems and if you I notice know. it's mostly a conversation about women women language women sports how come there's nothing happening on the male side trans men just transition and get on with it and then just 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 don't cause any problems and it's bizarre like why i think I think I don't even know. I actually don't know why why all the problems come are, are coming from the trans women. I think mm -hmm. like we were speaking about earlier, I think it comes from misogyny. Yeah. I think that if you are entitled, you're born as an entitled male with misogyny. Yes. Even with transition, there was points where I was I had to check myself and I'm like, was that a little bit misogynistic, Alexis? I think we need to tone that down. And it's trying to like check our own behaviour. But I think some of these trans women, and I'm air quoting that. Yes they don't lose that misogyny it stays with them and i think that's a, a clear difference between valid trans women and then the ones who just put on a lipstick don't make any effort to change anything else not the name not hormones nothing and expect to be treated as equal as women i'm like what? you can't walk into a female space no without transitioning like yeah 
Well, that's what I'm going to go back to AGP and I'm going to go back yeah. to fetishes and I'm going to go back to, I have a history of working in the fetish world. I was married to a female a dominatrix. I had, was wow. in that whole, yeah, whole space for, for many years and, and it's an adult space. It has nothing yeah, to do yeah. with, you know, so that being said, I was around a lot of fetishist people and I was around a lot of cross dressers. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have firsthand a site when I see them come in to this space. Nobody uses the word crossdresser anymore. Nobody uses transvestite. If you notice, they're all trans now. Yeah. And I think what happened was Pandora's box was opened on some level. And what you said earlier, the umbrella. So anyone can be trans without a diagnosis, without going through a system, you know, Liam could identify as a trans woman. That mm -hmm. it's, it's, it says it's it's sometimes seeming like you can hop online and be like, I now identify as a woman. That's and right. people have to respect that. And I think respect is earned. It shouldn't be an automatic thing, especially when it comes to using women's spaces and being in the world of women, which yeah. I never fully will be because I wasn't born as one. I didn't have those experiences growing up. Mm -hmm. But it's just so easy now and that that's one thing that's wild me like i don't know what's this guy's name he was on the bachelor he's getting really sorry <laughs> I, I said he her I know name, you're her name. Yeah. I don't know his name. Who cares? He's a wing I'm, nut. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that person is trolling trans women. I don't think that's legit because no. they're just going on camera with a bit of lipstick and a woman's right. top saying, I'm just gonna use the women's space and I got shouted and I'm just horrified. Right. Like if this is real oh my gosh, this person needs help. Not, and if this is not real, not. this is horrifying for our community. Well, he, and I'm going to call him he because I'm not going to respect him. He's totally trolling and, and he's getting away with it because mm -hmm. of the disingenuous trans community who said anyone knows who they are, even a five-year-old knows they're trans. The disingenuous insanity that they have yeah. created is now destroying. Do you know that it's actually destroying this community? That's oh, why yeah. people don't like us anymore. And that's yeah. why people put me and you into that saying, Box. oh my God. Nope. Yeah, which is it wild. It it's so unfair. It's so frustrating because I feel like the trans community, we were slowly like people, like these are just people. This is great. We were going right. forward. And I don't know, obviously I live in the UK, so it, the, yeah. I think it might be a little bit different to America, but it felt like it was getting to a point where we were just allowed to exist. And that's yes. great. But then for some reason, this last five years, we started to like go backwards. And I genuinely think in my lifetime, I'm going to start to see trans rights be stripped at through the law and that's taken right. away. And that's like the current prime minister we have in the UK mm -hmm. um, said trans women do not have a right to be in a female space mm -hmm. and they're coming after us. And people don't realize to start with trans people, but they're just going to work the way around everyone else. I know. That's right. People don't, that's the, that is the huge, that's the problem right there. They don't see what the damage they're doing. They also, I always like to mm -hmm. say this, people tend to see the glass half empty instead mm -hmm. of the glass half full. They're, they're not looking at what we have. Try looking from back in the eighties, back in the seventies, back in the, even back 10 years ago, they're not seeing how we actually have progressed. It's why I'm telling you, these people are not truly trans people. They don't necessarily care about our rights. There's, it's something that is very scary for me and very mm -hmm. sad. I'm, I'm 62. I'm pretty done with my transition. I'm pretty much living my life. I have a beautiful, amazing family life. I, I have nothing to complain about. I don't think any of this is going to affect my life, but what I see is you. Okay. And what I see is the younger generation. And I didn't do all this. I wasn't a guinea pig so that now you have to go through the same crap I went through. I won't stand for that. So I, I do stand at, as your trampa or as your elder. <laughs> it is my job. I on love some, that. It's true. It's my job to say, hey, wait a minute. There are young people who literally suffered the way I did who will suffer again, which is mm -hmm. so, ins it's like, I guess I could put in the analogy of gay rights or even mm -hmm. women's rights. I fought for women's rights to be able to have to, I didn't do the voting stuff, but I did a lot of things where women started to be able to have more ways, especially gay women. We, we mm -hmm. weren't allowed in certain spaces and weren't allowed to do things. So now I'm seeing it go backwards because men, now we have mm -hmm. to be really honest about it. Those trans women are men I who agree, are yeah. trying to, I think, I just think, do they not realize like there's so many content creators on different platforms doing really controversial things. As one example, Dylan Mulvaney, yeah. Days of oh. Girlhood. 
just a little, we'll just brush on it very lightly. <laughs> I don't know how, how that individual, how could she, she could not realize how damaging that action that song would be to the trans community That's because right. it's mocking women it's doing That's women right. face and when we're on such a verge of people like do we like trans people do we understand them we can't empathize with them the, are they all bad people and then it's just yeah. like how can you not realize that that is damaging the community or for all of us and it, it's just so selfish i think for so many of them to sit there and scream and shout and i got misgendered everyone should respect me screaming i'm like that's not helping us that's going backwards yes well in my opinion i don't think dylan is actually a trans person i think I've dylan got sucked up into the internet and TikTok and became a millions of trillions of you know just a little bit of follows I have, it, it does feel nice when people like watch you and say things nice to you. But if you don't ground yourself and you don't humble yourself, you can easily get caught up into it and it can take over. Everyone has ego, but if you mm -hmm. don't understand yeah. how dangerous the ego is and you don't understand, and that comes from age and growth, because I'm not going to say that I never had a big ego. Of course I did. We all kind of have to go through that on some level. But that being said, but we have bigger things now. We have social media. I didn't have that growing up. And I think right? in some ways it's good. Like I'm kind of glad that I didn't have to grow up as a trans woman at, through my teens and have all this yes. going around. Like I had yes. to figure it out on my own. Yes. It took me longer to get there, but it meant when I did transition, I was doing it all for the right reasons. It was all for me to yes. help my gender dysphoria. And it was just to make my life livable. It wasn't to please anyone. It wasn't to join a trend. It wasn't to be, look, be right. cool. And I, I, it worries me that I think sometimes with the social media stuff, especially the more outrageous people we see, I'm like, people are seeing this like what if this that's is impressing right. on younger people and you just no, they are mm. that's what is that's the thing that is upsetting to me because dylan knows i i will not believe that dylan doesn't know what they're doing dylan is just riding the wave of all the money all the fame that's exactly mm -hmm. right which you know i live in hollywood friend mm. i'm around it my partner works in hollywood i know every a lot about this industry and a lot about how it can really just feed your ego and then once that mm -hmm. happens everything else is out the door because mm. all you care about is that you're famous now and, and keep going with it and doing whatever you need to do to stay up there and Absolutely. doesn't care about this community because i'll tell you right now i already see the dylan thing sliding i already see dylan not so famous anymore you because think? yeah i already see it and I, i'll tell you why i see it because once you get into a platform that big and that high from a community that pushes you up because that's what's happening the trans non-binary community is pushing dylan up once dylan doesn't do what that community wants you to do guess what happens they yeah. will start to pull you and I, because dylan didn't get involved in the and we're not going to get involved in this but i'm just going to say it the israeli palestine conflict mm -hmm. he, she sorry she didn't get involved in it and they got mad at her and <laughs> Yeah. lost a lot of followers because of it maybe it's i don't know it's just it's just something i noticed like with the video and stuff and i actually did a video about it and she messaged me apologize i'm like it's too late like yeah what good right. is a sorry now you've put it out there it's been seen by millions of people millions of women have saw this and thought is this what dylan uh, thinks we are is this what trans women think we are that's popping right. pills and shopping and sleeping around oh which, don't God. get me wrong there's nothing wrong with any of those <laughs> things but to be a trans woman you're trying to we're trying to emulate women and what we see a woman to be and if that's yes. what you see a woman is then that you might need to reassess dylan because Dylan got pushed into it. I'm telling you, Dylan is surrounded by people. There is no way, shape or form that Dylan is not doing that all on their own. They mm. have a whole team of people and they got connected to all these people who are feeding her ego and feeding, oh, do this, do that. And that that's it. And it is a misrepresentation. I'm around, I've am i been around trans women for a long, long time. That is not how they live. Yeah. <laughs> that is, they're not popping pills and death. Maybe some go and do that, but it's actually a misrepresentation of trans women as well. Like, what are you talking about? So I, I find it so interesting that you have so much knowledge and experience of, through your life, like to yes. be around in the eighties and through the whole yes. HIV. I just, oh I, it's wild to me. Like you have, like, I just, I just could listen to you talk all day about like the history <laughs> of the you. community.
Well, it's important that, you know, I really do appreciate you hearing me as an elder and understanding that I'm only here to help you have a better life because I'm not going to be here forever. And I think for the elders who have been pushed out of this community, I'm not the only elder, there's many of us, but we're, but I tend to be the one who's like, go fuck yourself. I'm not I, love that. I love that though. <laughs> I love that you just, you say it as it is. Like, I think Blair's the same as well. And I think it's the British in me that's a little that's... bit different. And like, you guys just like straight to it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh gosh, they went there. Yeah, they because... Went there. Oh, because if we don't stand up for our own self, right? If we don't, Absolutely, if you don't yeah. put your air mask on first, how do you help yeah. other people? It's an actual real kind of thing. And I think you and I, well, my own observation of you, we care. We care about. I do. The I care generation. so much about yes. like the community as a whole, and because the thing is, you care even more when it directly is really affecting your life. And yes. I can see the future coming. I think in America and in the UK, like trans people are going to lose their rights. We're oh going to lose. Yeah. Like I can just so see yeah. it coming. Yeah. And it, these, if these people were genuinely trans, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. No. And it must be so frustrating to be, as you call yourself, a trans elder, yeah. to have this life experience, to have fought for LGBT rights, yes. to then just watch this new generation storm in, screaming and shouting and kicking, demanding more, to then just watch those rights start to drop down. It must be so frustrating. It's heartbreaking. Is it? More, more than, you know, I, I lost a lot of my friends during the AIDS epidemic and I hadn't transitioned yet, but I was a big old butch bull dyke, right? But <laughs> that being said, you know, I, I, I lost a lot of amazing men who today would have been huge, like hairdressers and choreographers and writers and singers and all of those beautiful things. And I lost them all to something that today people just flippantly just are like whatever or don't it even happened. want to talk about yeah or it happened mm. or it's still happening because people don't want to have those discussions and so when i see trans women with beards and going in you know locker rooms and showing their penises i'm like come on man there is there's no that's way. not a trans woman though that's not a trans woman is it that's something no. else entirely, entirely. and I, I i hope that the world people who, who can see this can see that's not an actual trans woman that this is just some bizarre man doing some awful grotesque stuff i guess but they don't here's where the problem i know lies. i think i have so much faith in people well the problem is that you have to also understand people v go by visuals right or they well, go yeah, by what they yeah. see so if you and i aren't at the forefront right of this whatever's happening but they are then they're going to think all trans women have a beard and fling and their that. penis around. That's mm -hmm. what they think. Yeah. Well, the thing is like with the Planet Fitness, going back to that, yeah. I was so angry and I'm a trans woman and yeah. I understand like about shaving and having to hide the, the facial hair and putting makeup on and wanting to feel comfortable in the space that I'm in. But I was yeah. so angry at that because it was just so disrespectful. And that's what it comes down to. It's about having respect for Thank women you. when you're considering using these spaces. It's trying to think, how are they going to feel if mm -hmm. I'm a six foot man with a beard and no makeup, no semblance of femininity at all, it's going to make them uncomfortable. So I think people should reassess what they're doing. But some people just don't care, apparently, do they? Well, they don't because it's not their concern. You and I are not their concern. Their concern yeah. is, first off, I think it's a narcissistic space. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, I think they think they're disrupting. <laughs> they're disrupting this idea that, you know, you can be a man can look like this and a woman can look like this and biology isn't real and <laughs> <laughs> it's very real. I'm a biological man and I will never stop saying that. And it, it's right fine on. though, because people are like, Alexis, why do you always say that? I'm like, because it's, it's my truth. I, I lived 27 years as a boy right. into a man. That's how I know life and that's what I experience. And then these, some trans women just <laughs> saying that I'm a woman now, but they've still got a beard. I'm like, the thing is, as human beings, 
we're so like you said earlier we're visual we're visual yes. creatures what we see like i read a statistic and it stuck with me and it takes the brain like 0.03 seconds to gender someone mm -hmm. it's just what we do as as human beings so you're walking down the street and you're going man woman man woman mm -hmm. and if you were a genuine trans woman you would want those receptors from people to see women yes. so if i do, i can't understand how you would want to be trans but not transition and be it seen as that gender, if that makes sense. Because they don't have gender dysphoria, I think, well, number yeah. one. Number yeah. two, they're trying to create a new category of trans, right? I don't think either of us want people to even know we're trans outside of our work here. If yeah. we're just walking to the grocery or to the street, or, Absolutely we agree. just want people to see us as Mrs. or Miss and Mr. And mm -hmm. when someone calls me Mr., <laughs> I feel like so happy. <laughs> I completely agree. It's, it's because the thing is, it reaffirms your who we are, and yes, and to not want that, I struggle to understand that. I think, I think that's what I really yeah. struggle to connect with. Like you're saying, you're trans, and you want to be seen as a woman, but you're not making any effort to show that aspect of yourself. That's what I can't comprehend because like, it's awful. I'm sure obviously in wait, wait, years and years ago when you started to transition and mm -hmm. you got misgendered, it, it makes you feel yeah. crap. But it I just don't understand how they don't want to be seen as- Because oh. they just don't. They don't want to do what we do. They call I think they we... like the attention though, you know? I 100%. Think, I think the attention yeah. they get, even though yeah. it's negative, and I was talking to Liam about this the other day, oh. and these crazy like loud people on social media screaming yes. and like, Lily Tino, another TikToker, <gasps> mm -hmm. um, on their videos, if you go on the comment sections, it's vile. People are vile towards them, which I don't condone, but no. I understand why people are mad. Yeah. But then I just think any attention to them is good attention. It's like you said, the narcissism in them, it's them needing people to know who they are and feeling relevant and important, even if it's bad attention. Well, I'm going to tell you also, it's a fetish because again, I'm going to go back to my time in the fetish world. Okay. And I can tell you people would come to the, see a dominatrix to have negative things said to them. Like you're a piece of shit. You're a loser. You're, and they would get off on it. So I'm telling Maybe. you, it is part of this sort of fetishy thing. When people are pointing fingers at you, it's, it turns them on in this weird way. And it, it's a real thing, but we're not talking about that. So Lily, is a fetishist. Lily is not a trans. 100%, I would never have thought about it like that. A hundred percent a fetishist is totally getting off on people being negative to them because why would they go to those restaurants and set up a camera and everyone's negative? They're getting off on it. it and yeah. then it, it, I'm, I'm seeing it all. It's all going to come to light. It might not come to light in a year or two years, but you watch. You're going to be like, oh, Trampa was totally right. <laughs> I love that so much. Trampa, it's amazing. You know, it's the best thing ever. One thing that comes with age on some level is wisdom and lived experience. And when I have all of this lived experience, and I can tell you, you guys keep going right ahead and doing your shit because I'm going to tell you, you're all going to be called out later on. Mm -hmm. But the problem, is if none of us were getting hurt from it i don't care what you do i don't care if you cut your arms or your legs off and you uh, are a beach ball you go right ahead and bounce down the street your, no one life. cares <laughs> Love that. That's, that's children children mm -hmm. friend i don't know how you feel about trans kids but let me say to you i don't i do not believe in trans kids i do not believe kids should be put in this space. I think kids need to grow up, go through puberty, figure out, maybe stumble and fall and do things, scrape their knees. Then they can make these lifelong- Unformed adult decisions. Yes. So I think earlier on in my transition, I used to wish so much that I'd started younger because being sure. a trans woman, I developed, I'm five foot 10. I have mm -hmm. male hands and feet. And those are things that I cannot change with surgery. Right. So part of me always was like, oh, I just wish I'd started younger and maybe I would not have those problems. Mm -hmm. But, hit a big but, I think there's so many, with social media especially, I think kids are very impressionable. Mm -hmm. And if you're seeing the same thing again and again, it can leave an impression on you. Don't get me wrong, I think kids can know that they have gender dysphoria and sure. that they're trans. Sure. But I think there's a lot more research coming out now about 
puberty block as not being good for them. I think we're understanding it more and more now. And now there's more like scientific research into it that, oh, hey, this kid's growing. Maybe it's not the best thing for them. Mm -hmm. It's a really delicate situation. Mm -hmm. And I could never say because I'm not a parent and Mm -hmm. I don't know how I would handle it if it's it's a hard one because I I'm not saying I agree with it because I I don't really oh, but at no, the end okay. of the day it's the parent sort of choices I guess but even then I'm like what if they go through this crazy alteration with their body and they realize one day it was just a phase and that's a te- scary thing for me like my mum said to me when I was 15 she's like I'm worried it's a phase I'm worried you're gonna do this and yes. it's 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 gonna be wrong yes. and then you've done it and you might have damaged your body you might have grown yeah. parts of your body and had yeah. things taken away that you can't undo and I respect her so at the time I couldn't understand it, but I respect her so much for that because I was a kid and she was making me aware that it very well could have been for me. It wasn't a phase, but I'm glad she, she made me stop and think, just have a really good think about this because this is your, you're changing everything about yourself. And people don't realize that when you transition, like your whole life and the way you live and everything is, is completely changed. So to do that young, I agree. It's it's not the best, but like I said, it's it's such a hard one. It's it's always going to be a touchy conversation to have, and I think it's always going to rub people the wrong way, and everyone's opinions yes. are going to be so different. Yes. But I think getting an eleven year old with minimal diagnosis, throwing them on hormones, absolutely not. I think waiting maybe till the older teens, but it, again, it's it's so hard to say. And I'm sorry if that if that people don't like that um oh but- th- people aren't gonna just dis- you are entitled to your opinion especially as a transsexual and especially somebody who's lived it and saying as a child now i'm gonna say maybe a little bit opposite i respect that you say that i think what you're saying makes a lot of sense to me also coming from a trans woman because yeah. trans women i think we have to be honest here you have a lot more things to do to sort of pass, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. And like you just said, your hands. Well, I freak out on my hands all the time. I have little hands. People are like, dude, you have man <laughs> hands. Or my feet. I call them lady feet. I'm like, I have lady feet. <laughs> <laughs> I wear my shoes a size bigger. Because do you I really? Do- totally. I, wish I, I wish I could wear smaller blooming shoes, honestly. <laughs> it's just, it, yeah, it, it's, I think... It's because I'm drawing from my own experience. That's right. The things That's that right. clock get me clocked. And like yes. if I'd have started in puberty, this wouldn't be here. And I'm going to have to have a surgery to remove that. And my hands would be smaller and maybe I wouldn't be five foot ten. But then at the same time that we don't fully know what is happening to children's bodies when they take these hormones. So That's right. I think letting them express themselves and letting kids be kids and just play and have fun. That's the most important thing. But it also raises a question, like, why do these kids, like, you'll see kids on social media. I saw a girl on a documentary, she was 10, and she knew she was non-binary. I didn't know anything about myself at 10. How can you know (laughs) with such certainty your identity? And that's the thing. What if they do it and it's wrong? That's right. And then they're, like you're infertile soon as you as you know you, you, when That's you start right. taking hormone replacement therapy is a strong chance it makes you sterile and to remove that chance especially from a little girl I know. if she, she'll never be uh be able to have kids and yep I, I get why people are worried and i get why people don't agree with it i completely understand but i think yeah. the tiny part of me that I have issues now, still lots of dysphoria from certain things. I think that's where I'm like, I wish I had for me, but for other people and other families and other children, it's down to the laws that we have in and it's down to the parents who are raising them. And I think that's the most important thing. But yeah. No, I think uh, everything you say, I'm totally in agreement with you. But one of the things I want people to understand, especially if a trans person, a younger one is watching this right now, Trans doesn't mean you get everything you want. Absolutely. And that's oh why gosh, it's, a, no. it's a very difficult space to be in. And you have to understand you're going to get things, but you're also not going to get things. Okay. Nothing, yeah. everything is not going to happen for you. And it it's doesn't why get rid of dysphoria though either. It doesn't get rid of dysphoria. Also, totally. also, you know, your hand thing is in your own brain because they mm-hmm. don't look like masculine or anything. You just Thank all you. pat. I know women who have big hands. Okay. Actually, and <laughs> I actually was married to a woman who was six foot tall and biological female and big feet and a size like 12. And like, I think people thought she was trans, but yeah, 
totally. But so, so this is where we, we have this idea as our own dysphoria. I don't have an Adam's apple. People know, you know, my voice sounds like Mickey Mouse. My, all these things, oh, that, you just, that. <laughs> all oh. these things that you pile on. But to me, those are worth that struggle I did as a child, as opposed to me not being sexually functioning because I'm a huge advocate That's for true. sex That's and true, for, yeah. for sexual freedom. And I'm also a big advocate for pregnancy and having kids and have, and that is your own choice. So we're putting, I am a parent, by the way, I have an 11 year old child. Uh, as soon to be adopting another child. But that being said, Congratulations. I, thank you, friend. But that being said, I don't think it's fair to even put that on a parent. And as yeah. a parent, I would struggle hard. I with would. I my absolutely child. would. If, I would. If they came out as trans, I completely totally. agree. Totally. Yeah. Do you know also, what I find? Go on, sorry. I just want to say this one th last thing. And then the one thing I want to say is these kids are identifying as trans. They're mm -hmm. not saying, I feel like a boy or I feel like a I girl like am. you and I did. Which is very, it, very different. Very different. Very, very different. So yeah. are I they just think, thinking that? I think the social media aspect doesn't help. I think having right. so much of it in their face all the time might yes. lead them to it. Yes. Um, but like I said earlier, I don't think a 10-year-old should be thrown on hormones. Absolutely not. Like yeah, that is, is it's, it's reckless. But I think there's a, there's a gray area somewhere yes. in there. And I'm not the there one is. to explain it. And I can't explain it. I'm not yeah. a scientist. I don't know all the data and the details mm -hmm. and everything. And like yeah. you said, sexual function and not being able to get pregnant. Like it's horrifying when you see these detransition stories and they can't have kids. Like I feel so much for them. Oh and then detransition rates are going up. Uh, so I know there's so much to take into consideration, but you know what I love the most, right? When you see all these debates about this topic online, people scream and shout and our opinions are different, but yes. we can just communicate like adults. And I think that's what the world needs to see more. Like our, our opinions might be slightly different, but we just can have a conversation about it and understand where each other's coming from. That is a debate. But you see these debates where they're just, everyone's out screaming. I'm like, no one's listening now. Yeah, that's right. Thank you for saying that. It's right. We disagree probably a little bit there, but at the same time, I think the ultimate thing is we have to care about these children. And of mm -hmm. course, there's going to be a one or two kids, I think, that are battling with their dysphoria. Me and you prove it. We were those kids. But we did live a little bit through a struggle and got to that next. And that's what I want people to see. You can get through that struggle. Now, if we can help kids not get have to deal with some of the struggle. I think that's very important. But m problem for me is the detransitioner rate. The problem yeah. for me is the majority of the kids who are transitioning are mostly females. Okay, not yeah. males. And if that wonder, says why? Why do you think that is? Oh, I could just because oh. when you're a girl and you go through puberty, it is totally different than being a boy and going through puberty. Yeah. You're growing breasts, you're getting your period. It is a mess. And all of a sudden sexualization starts happening from the outside world. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of trauma attached. I'm noticing because I'm watching and reading from these young detransitioners. A lot of them had trauma, maybe it could be sexual trauma, yeah. where they didn't want to be seen as a girl anymore. And it's better to be a boy. I mean, there's layers. To change to, their identity because they don't want to be that right. person that got hurt. Yeah, that's I right. That. So it's making it a difficult space to even have this conversation because already we're transitioning kids who should never have transitioned. And they're saying it. I wish I never cut my breasts off at 15. Yeah. I wish I wouldn't have done this. I have now mustache for the rest of my life. So now the people who hate us dangle that in front of the world and say, see, there's no such thing as trans people. I know. Because and it's used against us. So that is, right. I, I, that's where I agree with you completely. Like, I think when people don't like trans people, they will use anything remotely negative and they'll find the star is about these detransition kids and they will use it against saying, well, no one's yes. really trans. And, and that's, that is obviously really damaging to the community. And then those kids' lives are not ruined forever, but they will have so many more hurdles to get through. That's right. So I, I, I do, I empathize with both sides. I'm on the fence. I'm yeah. definitely yeah. like I'm yeah. I'm I'm leaning more towards you, yeah. but I can understand both sides of this yes. debate. Absolutely. Yes. And there are young people who have transitioned at an early age who live I know them. I have friends with yeah. them. And they transitioned at sixteen and they're now like thirty and they're Kim perfectly... Petrus. There you go. But but they, but they don't always fit into that perfect alignment that there they have genuine dysphoria yeah so they, i agree and, and the, I, there's also the question of the ethics like is there 
is the diagnosis for gender dysphoria is it rigor enough, rigorous enough is it it's, it's not in america i believe it's a lot easier to transition isn't yeah. it than it is here in the uk it's a it lot is. harder to transition in the uk yeah well we need to get back to that kind of thing here you can just say you're trans and go into a clinic and get testosterone and these kids oh are my hurting. gosh it's sick it's actually sick it's that it's not like <laughs> it's here at all as far as i'm aware anyway it took wow. me like i got hormones fast and it took me about eight months and that's super fast it's most people's but a year still, for two years but still i had to go through years of that and again i don't want to be like all tramp all that when i did it it should have been. No, but your experience is so <laughs> important because it's led the way for everyone else that's coming after it, after you. So it's called I a think, safe system. Yeah, it should be because you're literally altering. Like, I remember that I had this phone call, and the doctor said, "Okay, so obviously you've got your hormones now. Just before you start, I want you to really think this is going to make you infertile. You yeah. need to know that right now. You have to think about that because you can freeze, mm -hmm. but." Once you start this, after so many months, you, the chance of you ever having biological children is gone. Mm -hmm. And it and it really was like a cold wake up call for me. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, this is I'm really putting some strong stuff in my body to do this. Mm -hmm. And I, I really uh, like assessed myself and thought, is this something I need to do to be happy? And I was like, yeah, I had to do this. Mm -hmm. But it was good that it put this like mirror in front of me and just sort of made me realize what I was doing to myself. I think so many people don't realize mm -hmm. what the hormones are doing to you. And it's it's worrying because they're a strong, strong ass chemical going into your body. <laughs> look at you. You could never go back to being male. You look like a woman. Thank you. <laughs> they, do you know what? It's, it's wild. Like I, I feel lucky in a lot of ways. Um with my transition and I've had a lot of, like I said, a lot of support from like Liam with like having my surgeries and helping me finance mm -hmm. it effectively. But it's, it's wild to think like looking back, like when I see old pictures of myself, like some trans people can't stand it. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that was who I was. And yeah. it's, I wasn't super happy as that person, but I can look back and be like, well, that person got me to where I am today. They got me strong enough and brave Excellent. enough to do this. Excellent. And I had so many great experiences as a man. I, I met Liam as a, as a man, he fell in love with me. Excellent. That's a whole other thing, I guess, for another conversation. I'd love to and, know about that. But yeah, but I'm, it's, I just, I could never hate that person because I still am that person. I just think the outer shells changed a lot. Thank you. That's such an important message that I, I think young people need to hear because they call it a dead name and they literally disconnect. I'm like, what are you talking about? That is literally you. You're just presenting as a different, happier person now. When yeah. you cut off your past, you are asking for problems because they will creep, it'll creep up. Inside. It always will. It always yep. will. And it's, I think we need to like the trauma that everyone has trauma in life. Life's That's hard, right. isn't it? That's I think right. you have to deal with that trauma because transition isn't necessarily going to fix that trauma. No. And I needed to deal with my, de I needed to deal with my demons before I could transition. I think that's another reason why my mom wanted me to wait. I had yeah. these like issues when I was younger and I had to deal with them and get through them and get better. Yeah. And then I could deal with the gender dysphoria and really like analyze that aspect of myself. Wow. But, yeah. Your mom like, sounds amazing. Your mom sounds so loving and beautiful and caring. Wow. Thank and you have a you. good relationship with her today. Yeah, she I she's like my best friend. I love her to bits. She's oh, she it. very much keeps my feet on the ground though. Like I'll it. post a video and she'll be like, I didn't like your lipstick in that video though. <laughs> I'm like, thanks, mom. That's great. She's like, your hair looked a bit rubbish, didn't it? In that one. I'm like, Thank thanks, Tracy. Thank you. She's called Tracy. I need to get her on my channel, but she's like, No, no, no one wants to see me. I'm like, Yeah, we do. Too. Yeah, but yeah, do. she she was always great at being a good mom, like and loving and supportive, but also like waking me up when I needed yeah. to be woken up because I said, mom, I'm trans. And then the next day I was going to go to school and address and makeup and, mm -hmm. and hair. And she wasn't, she didn't care what people thought about me or her, mm -hmm. but she was worried for me that I was going to get yeah. bullied and attacked. Cause I would have been. Yeah. And she was always very good at making me see the world, the real world, live, be in the real world and not in this little bubble land that I live in. I used wow. to live in. Well, yeah. I mean, that says everything about a parent and also being a parent is it, that's your job as a parent is to really keep your kid grounded in Protect reality. Them. 
Yeah. Well. And don't feed them nonsense or, you know, mm -hmm. really get them ready for the real world. And your mom did a great job with you. She really did because Thank I you. do see that heart of yours is really solid gold and you, you Thank care you. about people. Oh. You have compassion. It, it, you know, it comes through even in your videos, everything. It comes through that you care. You're, you're not coming off. Sometimes I come off real, ah, you know, <laughs> I can't help it. Maybe it's Wait. the testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I remember, I remember that. It made me a lot angrier. Saying that though, when I started eating, and like the mood swings I had at some certain points, <laughs> Paul Liam had to deal with a lot, bless him, yeah. the emotional roller coaster I went through. <laughs> but yeah, he, I am very lucky to have him. It's very rare, isn't it, when a trans person yes. comes out to have the same partner stick around. Very, and very, very rare. I'm so, I know, yes. I, I know, I'm so lucky. Um, he's he's great. He's a great guy. He says a lot about him. It says a lot about him. It says it, a lot about him. It you really does. Like, yeah. do you know what? I told him I was trans. Well, I said to him, I've I've always had an issue with my gender. I've yeah. always been unhappy. Like, I feel like I'm living life, but it's through like a blurred lens. Yeah. I'm not fully enjoying everything. I'm not like, I can experience happiness, but I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. And I said, I think I feel like I want to transition. Mm -hmm. And he sort of stood there for five seconds. And then he just looked at me and said, what do we need to do then? And I just thought, how have I, how is this man like yeah. asked me to marry him? I couldn't wow. understand like how someone could immediately be so like just with it straight away. And he was encouraging me like, call the doctor. You need to speak to me. You need to see what wow. we need to do. And every step of the way, when I had the terrible wigs, the five o'clock shadow, <laughs> the ugly dresses, he's like, you look amazing, babe. Oh, Always God. encouraging and supporting me. And he's, he's great. I mean, sometimes I could like, because he drives me crazy. That's well, normal. But but that being said, well, it just says, I'm telling you, it says a lot about you too, because you attracted this human being who loves you for who you are. It doesn't matter that you're trans or you're whatever. It has nothing to do with that. And that's what I keep telling people. It's about people. Your attraction yeah. is towards people. Your attraction isn't, you know, you could identify as gay, right? But you could, uh, one day as a gay man, you could all of a sudden see a woman that you might want to be with. But we have this weird thing about, about boxes. having to that's right stay in the box that's yeah right. stay especially in the with box. sexuality like i think people yes. a lot of people struggle to understand our relationship and i got so many comments earlier on like you've trapped him you've wow. ruined his life he's a gay man he's missing out and wow. like the thing liam always said like yes part of it was hard because he thought he was going to spend the rest of his life with this man this yeah. man that he loved yeah. and i changed all that and i was almost asking him to change his life forever yeah. and for him to stick around shows it's a great testament to who he is and his 100%. character but it, he just didn't care like because he realized after a while he didn't mourn me the old me when the beard went the wigs came and i think it was a bit of a shock at first mm -hmm. but and he mourned the old boy but then he said I, he got someone new. The same person in here, oh. though. Like, that's always been the same. I, I don't think I've ever changed. I'm just a lot happier now. I agree. I agree. I don't think it, even though I don't know you before, I can, just doesn't change. This part can't change. What happens no. is it becomes a happy you instead of a sad you. And that's why people need to understand we're not going anywhere, people. We, we are no. here. Transsexual people exist. It's a real thing. What we want you to understand is what's happening in this space is not what we always what we are. agree with. And we yeah. don't think it's okay. And we don't like this insanity of misogyny and nastiness and you know, uh, that's why I think, again, I'm going to just keep repeating. That's why a voice like yours at this time, you couldn't have done your channel at a better time. I Thank think. you. Thank you. I think I, I just got so sick of seeing like the way that trans women are getting painted by trans women. That's the ironic thing is yeah. that it's not yeah. like it's, I mean, there is some people out there who aren't trans who don't, who say bad things about us, but it's a lot of the negativity is coming from these yes. trans women online. Yes. And I just thought, I don't see myself like you. We're not the same. I don't have right. these values and thoughts. And I think when it starts to, to impact the, the women in my life, my mom, my sister, my best friends, when they're like, well, this is not okay. We don't agree with this. I'm like, okay, hang up. This is bad then. Because it's not only affecting me now, it's affecting the women I love. And that's when I started to feel like I had to say something because yeah. I just didn't want everyone to think that all trans people and 
non-binary the whole groups were like let's get rid of breastfeeding and make it inclusive <sighs> which completely eradicates wow. a lot of women's identity and it, it infuriated me so much yeah. that it's to be politically correct you are literally wiping away female identity women's identity and you might be making one tiny group not 0.05% of the population feel better <laughs> But the 49% that are women, I think a lot of them don't want these terminologies. They don't want to be referred to as a womb carrier. Their mothers. So it really gets me so angry. I don't. And I'm Honestly. a man. <laughs> Honestly, it's wild to me. Like, I just feel like political correctness now, not just for trans, just for everyone. Totally. It's going so wild. It's and you sick. can't say anything anymore without offending yeah. someone. That's right. And it's like, I want... Um, <laughs> You, you just can't. You just can't please everyone, can you? That's the thing. <laughs> I mean, really, it, you have to laugh or we're going to be crying all day long. Absolutely. It's absurd. I, absolutely. <laughs> and I just sometimes see like these, especially when it comes to like pronouns, like I was watching an interview on a British like Good Morning show and the person in it was non-binary and yeah. they, they referred to uh, one of the other presenters and said, oh, what are your pronouns? And oh. the presenter was like, clearly a woman yeah. just a woman yeah. and i'm like we don't need to ask every person we meet that's their right. pronouns it's unrealistic that's not how society yeah. is gonna work yeah. so just if someone has they then pronouns use them fair enough use the right terminology to make that's that right. individual feel comfortable but we shouldn't be trying to impose that on everyone around that's us right. because that's not how the world works no, but that again, you make so many great points. We're what zero 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 point five percent of the universe, and like everyone. But the, I, I I realized why the pronoun thing came. It came when the no passing thing came because yeah. you and I don't ever have to tell our our pronouns. But it's yeah. the people who don't want to pass, and the people who have literally ruined the whole system are forcing us to play their little game. And that's mm -hmm. why I said, no, 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 this is a game. I'm not playing. I do too much of an effort, you know, to do this. Infuriates. Someone asked yes. me my pronoun pronouns once That's not right. because they knew i was a trans woman but they were trying to be politically correct so should i use they or she and i'm like you should use what? she please like Thank you. i didn't do all this transition <laughs> painful bloody surgeries <laughs> painful the five or six i've had so far and to, to, to be asked if if i am wow. a she is wild to me it, it to me it's a little bit disrespectful as well like I find found it a little bit disrespectful towards me. So I'm like, I am trying to show you that I am a she. Yes. Please use that. Yeah. Duh. It's wild, it's so isn't it? <laughs> it's oh. it's vile. It's absurd. It's ridiculous. We're playing into people's weird fetishes. We're bending over backwards. But you know, the thing is, Alexis is stuff like this won't stay forever. And I always say you, you cannot. No, you cannot build your house on a false on a weak foundation, you can't. And so it's built on a weak foundation. When you start saying biology isn't real and that we're really women, we're not men, or I'm really a man and not a woman. When you start doing that, you think the rest of the world is gonna play into that forever? No, they're I not. People are waking up now they and are. understanding. And there's, you can have respect for trans people, but not agree with them or, or agree with certain, like, I think that's, I think women especially have been so yes. scared to speak up because yes. they don't want to be deemed transphobic or right. a turf right. and there are some turfs out there obviously of course i think if course. something's affecting you or upsetting you you're allowed to speak up about it and voice yes. your opinion you don't have to agree just because you're scared you're going to get deemed a transphobe but i get called since... transphobic all the time me too <laughs> i'm like join the club i'm like cool cool that's great thank you turf i'm a turf I'm yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. uh because i will not play into that nonsense and i don't believe jk rowling is a transphobe and i have supported her from day one as a woman who's entitled to say what she needs to say how dare you shut her voice down and now here comes the backlash because she's not going to give up and now she's going after us and she won't even lay down now she's like really she's riled up she's she riled, up. riled up there was a while where i was like struggling to understand why people were calling her a turf i was yeah. like i don't see it no nope. um i don't not. agree with everything that she said and okay. i think she's a controversial and she can yeah. be a bit she can push back especially on trans women yes so again yes. it's another it's another one where i'm like oh my gosh i can't believe she just said that or did that or put that out online 
But it's who am I to judge? She's a woman who can say. But that I don't know how I've been following it since it started, and I'm going to mm-hmm. tell you she was nice in the beginning, and all she, she was. said was sex based rights matter i matter as a woman you're not a you're not a woman you're a trans woman that's all she said what is transphobic about that and i I was like you people are sick so come on man when you keep getting punched in the face there's gonna be a certain time where and now she's she's now pissed and i'm gonna say i don't of course like some of the things she's saying but i'm just gonna let her go because they punched her in the face too long and she came for her hard they did. Hard. They did. And Hard. she's fighting back. And what what, what she's right. saying now, I don't agree with everything that she's Doesn't saying. Matter. I, That's right. I can't stop her. So nope. she's just she's gonna do it anyway. There's that woman over there in the UK. She's a famous trans woman who who's an instigator of hers who just goes after her. Oh, uh, what's her name? What's her in- name? India. It's not Something. India. And then there's another one. There's oh. yeah. Well, I forgot. Anyway, she just goes after JK. And so all this time, it's just like, you see it. It's so nasty and wrong. It's like lay off JK. If you but just that doesn't lay off. paint them in a good light though, again, like having like a screaming match, shouting and swearing. It's there you never, go. You're never going to win an argument like nope, that. And when I never. see like these clips of like students, like protesting, like you will oh use God. the correct pronoun in my name. And I'm like, <laughs> no one's going to respect you for that. That's not how you get respect as an, in, the, in the real world. Nope. It it will never work, but people... It's okay. Me and you are speaking up, and you're a beautiful, amazing human. And it it come, You know, that's how I always... I believe in the universe, and I believe that the right always... The right way always comes to the surface, okay? And as long as... It's hard right now, but please don't ever stop, friend. And I'm going to say to everybody out there, and and, uh, please follow her. Please, let's push her up. No, I'm not kidding. We need to push you even higher. And the more subscribers she gets, the bigger her channel becomes and the bigger her voice becomes. It's how this channel thing works. And I know that. The more you get, the more you're pushed up by YouTube. So uh, together... We can help end a lot of this stuff and and we need to have voices like hers more than ever. And if you care about women and you care about children and you care about actual trans rights, then Alexis is really the person that we need to sort of give a, a bigger space to. You're growing, friend, and you're growing because thank you're you. you're authentic and real and saying the things that you know need to be said. So thank you. So I really I you. really appreciate coming from you, someone who I have a, a lot of respect and admire. Thank so you, thank, thank you so much for having me, Buck. It's been wild. I've loved it. I'm, I'm, I'm awesome. so sweaty right now because I've been nervous the <laughs> entire too. time. I'm, I'm so sweaty. I'm literally like <laughs> It's hot in LA. Let me tell you, I'm just like <laughs> I've got all these lights hitting me. It's I know. Warm. Well, it's warm in the UK. <laughs> but you like look amazing, degrees. so it doesn't really matter. But that being said, thanks, Thank Alexis. You. you know, I really do value your time here. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for subscribing, getting this out there. Send it to people. You know, this is how we're gonna make a big difference in the world. And I appreciate you all, and I'll see you guys all on the live on Wednesday. Hey, check out my new podcast at Buck Angel Podcast on YouTube. Real stories, real people.